Okay, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you our program in Python for 2D to 3D reconstruction. These are the libraries that you're going to need. And let's get right to it. You're going to need to create a basket folder somewhere on your desktop, something easily accessible that you can move images in and out of. And you really only need the original image in that folder for right now. So let's get back to Python and kick this right off. So we're going to start by importing the image as grayscale and you'll need to put these inputs in and you'll get your vessels in white here, regions of interest. Okay, next section is going to apply canny edge detection, which is saying I want to create the edges of this image as true values and everything else as a false value. The next section is going to apply a skeletonization filter, which is going to find the median axis of this here, this center line axis here, is a true value now, along with all the other center axes of the axes of the rest of the, the image there. But what we've done is take We've taken this one and converted to this one, and then this one and converted to this one. All right, our next is going to be a VTK rendering window practice where we can interact with the UI. We can roll in, we can roll out, we can click and drag, or right click and keyboard functions also, but we'll talk about those later. Press escape to close the window. And the next one is gonna be our skeletonized VTK rendering window, again, same interaction, and escape when you're ready to close. And here is where we're going to take all of those true values as pixel, pixel points, data points, all of these ones and all of these ones, and we're going to extract them and move them onto a blank cam canvas. So we're not, we're not working with an image anymore. We're working with plot data that is identical to the scale of that image. And when we run that, you see the user has these inputs for this section, and it produces this plot. So that red line is the skeleton, and the blue lines are the contours. The gray line is there to help the user with the interface in just a, just a minute. We'll get to that. Okay, here we're just going to resize, resize the image. I think I blew it up by 500% just so we have a, a nice big window that we can look at here. Escape when you're ready to close. And then finally we're going to clip we're going to clip the whole image at a certain threshold that gives us just a nice tint so it's not so bright and in your face like that. Okay, moving into section 2, we're going to start selecting points. So that VTK window is going to come up again. See what that little tint on there is a little easier on the eyes. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold down control. You can either do right clicks to select points, or you can just hold down control and drag the mouse. Just trace it right down that red line. See the gray line is kind of there to help you stay in the middle. Gray is okay to good. Red is great. We want a, we want a great line here. Yeah, we're coming on in. We'll finish right at that first intersection there. Okay, when I close out, I'm going to want 21 points off of that, and I actually have it interpolated for 20. So let's just make a quick switch there, and let's go. Let's go down and let's get 21. Okay, very good. Okay, our next section is going to be capturing the points with the same technique along the blue contour line. So a VTK window will come up. And this time when you make your first click, your initial primary line is going to illuminate so you can kind of trace right around it there. You know you're going for the blue, but it's going to give you references for when you encounter situations that have noise in them. Like this is a great example right here. This giant hump, I don't think that ascending aorta has a giant hump right here. I think it probably contours more just right around that way. So you can eliminate noise from your edges 
at this stage of the program. I mean, there's another great example right here, this shark fin thing here. We can just kind of bypass that staying in our blues and bring it right on down to the end there. That's great. For this one, we want to have anywhere from 80 to 100 points, and we got 85, so we're good there. And carrying on to the next section is going to plot those 21 points here with the red line, orange points, and then the purple points will go with the blue line for the 88 there. All right. Our next section is going to be some radii hunting. So let's bring our window up. Your first right click will get your 21 points on your main line active, and it'll put the 88 points active here. So what the user is looking to do is to pick points from the contour to the main line that are arc tangent or perpendicular to those. And the yellow points are there to act as a guide. If you if you this one really wants to be more like right here, and since I know it's on the blue line, I can still select it. So these yellow points aren't definitive, but they, they are helpful. Move it right along. I mean if I had drawn that contour out here, that would have been that would have been another twenty to thirty percent increase. That would have been no good. Okay, just continue to select these points. I know we're coming up to another region that had some noise in it. So we'll see how we kind of handle that. Oh, I missed one there, but I know I clicked in the blue, so I, I still got it. Also in the background, this, oh actually no, it doesn't tell you which points are being selected anymore. I got rid of that because I thought it was excessive and unnecessary. All right, so move them to there, there, finishing our point selection right here. That's it, we can escape from there, and now it's going to tell us how many pairs we selected, 21. That's great. All right, our next section, we're going to start selecting secondary or branch vessels. These are always done with seven points plus two, so right clicks. Brachiocephalic branch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the one, two are to calculate the diameter. Again, noisy here, this diameter is more like that, there. Seven points selected, very good. Next section is going to be for the left common carotid branch. Bring that in again, seven plus two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, seven selected, very good. And our third branch, the right subclavian branch will be again, seven plus two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. All right. That's the end of our data selection. Now Python is going to stack those 20 interior points that I selected into an array and the 21 exterior points into an array. I'm sorry, 21 and 21 of both will be stacked into separate arrays and then the distances of all the pairs will be calculated. Next, we'll create a spline, which is a single cell 21 point object for both of our lines. And we'll create polydata objects, which is a 21 point 21 cell object through each one. Next, we're going to create the scalars array of all of our radii distances. It'll be an array of 21 inputs. And we'll also apply tube filters to our primary line and our branch lines. The branch lines will be affixed based on the measurement that I created, but the primary tube filter is going to have a radius that varies based on that scalars array. So that's that's a really cool feature that we've done here. And we've also added an origin object at the 0, 0, 0 point. The next section is going to be extracting face data, point data, geometry, triangles, all the different mesh object 
data points from PyVista about our objects that we've created. And then we're going to convert them into single cells. So I don't have to say points and faces and normals separately. It'll all be in, in one cell object here, this, this data object. And our next section is going to be creating a union. So we eventually took those three branch objects and kept them as one object. So it was just one file as far as Python was concerned. And we said, attach them right in here, but there are overlapping points and I want to get rid of those. So I want to keep all of the non-common points and then create that into one singular polydata object. The next is going to be to create the point cloud and to smooth the exterior surface of the mesh. And here we're going to do a decimation that's, this is more of an optional section here. It's saying I want to remove a certain percentage of the triangles on the surface of the mesh, which can help for creating volume mesh. It'll, it'll make it much easier when you decide to set your edge lengths, parameters and, and face angles and normals for your, for your volume mesh. And here's our, here's just a basic plot of, of our guy there. And let's go ahead and close that out. And now let's see the real thing. So if we go ahead and blow this window up, we see our origin object there at the zero, zero, zero point. And let's just go ahead and we can see how the radius of the aorta here is following the contour of that blue line there. So it came out really nice. And then we have our branch vessels that attach, <coughs> that attach right in here. And you can see that the decimation has, there's not a whole mess. I mean, I'm zoomed in pretty close here. And I can see the individual triangle lines. Whereas if I hadn't decimated it, then there might be twice or three times as many, depending on what percentage I would have picked. But another cool feature about this rendering window is that if you really want to, you can jump right inside of your vessel. Where are we? Bring me in. And you can follow that red line right around as it contours through the vessel here. Whoops, keep me inside. Nope, keep me inside. There we are, there we are, right inside here. Bring it right through and then it would move right down out to that far end there, to the distal end of the descending aorta. So, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching.